Well, hello there, everybody. Happy Easter. I hope you all are having a fabulous Easter Sunday. Um, uh, we in Europe, we start really on Friday. We have uh, Easter is a much bigger thing in Germany, where I come from. Uh, we start Friday, really Thursday evening with um, watching the Pope, um, uh, washing the feet um, of usually of prisoners or so on. And then Friday, um, the procession. And then Saturday is the big shopping day and the big uh, cooking day and cleaning day. And then Sunday is Eastern and um, yeah, the little kids go on egg hunts and um, just very much like here. However, um, it is more of a religious holiday in uh, Germany than it is here. Um, maybe more so here with the Catholics. But this year we had uh, Passover and Easter together. So um, that made it really rather interesting because so many of our Jewish communities, they uh, celebrate both. You know, they have their Seder dinners and they have their um, Easter um, dinner, and I think it's all great. Whenever it is involving good food and fun people around where you can invite people, I'm in. I love it. So I don't know about you guys, but I really have always, Eastern always has been one of, one of the holidays that I like. Um, I hear so often, oh, well, you know, it's not, it's not a big thing here and so on. Well, you know, yeah, you make it a big thing. You know, it's, it's an opportunity to get together with friends, even to get together or go out and um, see some of the friends that may be shut in, you know. So many people are very ill and they can't go anywhere. So it might be a good idea on Eastern. Also, the this Pope um, I like very much, even though I'm really not any Catholic anymore, um, as I used to be, but and I'm not religious at all. But um, I do like this Pope because he seems to have a lot of humility. And that's what we need a little bit more in this country at this point. Um, I can see that there's a lot of, um, um, well, not only greed going on, but also, uh, you know, I'm better than you are because, well, that doesn't usually serve us very well. It doesn't serve us very well at all. And right now, and I hope you all excuse me a little bit, because you know I really am not really political on this show, and I don't want to make it a political show. However, right now I'm very perturbed, because um, there are there is a um, bill and a movement going through government um, lobbied by the pharmaceutical companies, by doctors, by um, a lot of people that um, benefit from uh, us not using alternative health care. Apparently, alternative health care is becoming a real, real big issue. It's a billion-dollar market. More people than ever are using alternative means to keep themselves he healthy, to keep themselves healthy, or get healthy for themselves and for their animals. And um, you know, I am a homeopathist, so naturally, yes, I am for that. But even if I would not be, you know, I came to this country. When I was a grown up, I was raised in Germany and I lived all over the world and uh, to and I studied all over the world. So I think I can safely say when I came to America and I went to school here for a while um, to the University of San Francisco um, to study some some, uh, you know, I studied English and I studied at that time a little science. And um, I signed up for an America that was a little bit more tolerant. 
I don't know about you, but I'm really getting to the point of where enough already with the regulations, enough already with, with leading us by the hand to teaching us that we cannot use this or we cannot do that. Now, mind you, laws should be, and there should be some government oversight. However, this bill that is right now in um, being formulated, it really is the FDA has been looking into homeopathic remedies, saying that they have had uh, cause to, um, that homeopathy is harmful. Well, <laughs> That is really um, a very, very, I, I was at first when I read it, I said, what? How does this happen? Because up till this point, they kept saying, oh, homeopathy is just quackery. It's just water, uh, little pills dissolved in water, and uh, they don't do anything, and they don't, nothing will become of it. Well, now all of a sudden, it's the evil of the century. Now, you guess anybody who has a has half a brain would know who is behind all of that. All of the companies that are losing money by us not using their chemical crop. So, excuse me, got a frog in my throat. It's so vile, I, I, I'm choking on it. All right, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm not. It is really quite, quite. The, the, our uh, homeopathy world is a buzz with what can we do? <coughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry. Try right, take but, it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll recover. I hope America and people will recover too. And here's what we can do. Now, uh, writing to your congressman and saying, oh, I've used homeopathy and it works fabulous and I don't want you to um, uh, do away with it because this is what the bill is going to be saying. And it's very insidious. It's built into an act to regulate all alternative else. All. That means if you use Reiki, if you use kinesiology, if you use herbal, anything, all will be regulated. And not just regulated, that uh, the practitioners all have to have licenses. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, no, 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 no. It's only going to be prescribed by doctors. Now, I ask you, if you have gone lately to a doctor and talked to him about even nutrition, how large was his knowledge? Yours was probably a lot larger than his. Because doctors do not, uh, they do not learn homeopathy. They don't learn homeopathy. They don't learn nutrition. They don't learn herbal. They don't learn vitamins. The most I ever get, get I mean, I don't go to the doctor, but uh, I hear from my clients um, how well my doctor prescribed uh, some vitamin uh, D3. Well, that's the mode. If you talk to them about any other vitamin, they have no clue of what, what it does. And vitamins in reality, and talking about vitamins, can be more harmful to you than uh, probably a lot of other things. Also, herbal medication, real herbal medication, is can produce side effects. Now, that is a fact. Homeopathy, I've never seen side effects with homeopathy. I've never seen and I've been practicing for 15, close to 20 years. I have never seen um, homeopathy do an adverse, uh, have an adverse reaction. So uh, could it be possible? Anything and everything is possible, but I do not really think so. Um, that is why it is always the preferred method for me. However, Leave that aside. Let's not talk about homeopathy. Let's not talk about which one. Let's talk about your choice. Your choice is being taken away. What this bill is going to say 
if you want to not to have chemicals in your body and you would rather treat your animal, yourself with a natural compound, you have to go to a doctor to get it prescribed. You cannot buy it over the counter anymore. Now that, in my opinion, is freedom of choice of medical care and that we should protest. We should very loudly protest because that is not the American way. The American way is freedom, the right to choose. That is our First Amendment. That is what we, that is what is in the Constitution. And maybe the Constitution should be um, amended to not only have religious freedom, but medical freedom also. You know, because. <clears throat> Gisela, yes. I don't I don't think it's gonna pass. Well you know why? Um, uh, yeah. Because they are saying that homeopathy is a quackery. Yeah. So if it's quackery and it doesn't do anything, what are you regulating? Uh, it doesn't have anything in it. Why well, so next they're gonna regulate water. Absolutely. So it's I don't think I don't think it'll work but people should still absolutely let them let their representatives know that no I don't go for absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. I want just it takes a very short little thing and uh what I will do this afternoon I will put the link onto my website uh for that bill, okay? okay. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, people can read up what is really in that bill. It's our time is not long enough to really talk about the entire bill here. And uh, but uh, in my opinion, it's not so much of what you're using. It's the freedom of choice that you can choose whatever you want to. If you want to use um, um, M&Ms to get yourself healthy, that's your choice. It should not it should not be regulated by the government. I mean, are we all children? Do we all have to have uh, government mommy and daddy tell us every step of the way? That's not that's not the way it should be. We should have the freedom to to do that. I would love to hear from from my listeners to uh, what their viewpoint is and um there's a big discussion right now on minutes going on um you know I'm none if you are uh, I know you're on that um on the um minutes uh mailing list there too so um if you are then uh tune into that and listen to it it's really quite scary of what is happening unfortunately uh, the alternative healthcare community is, for one thing, they are aware, but by the nature of them being, most alternative healthcare providers are not rebels. I'm one of the few, well, maybe a few others, but, uh, you know, I, uh, wherever there's injustice, I'm there. I do not want want injustice, and that is an injustification. We do not want that. Okay. So let me know. Um, go to my website, look at the bill, and please write to your con in Pennsylvania right now. In Pennsylvania right now, there's next week or the week after. There's a hearing again. Licensing um, natural healthcare providers. Now, who are the ones who are powering towards that? The four schools that are producing naturopathic doctors. None of them are in Pennsylvania. There's one in Connecticut, two in Arizona, uh, and I think two are in uh, one in Oregon and one in Washington State. That's it. They have com but they have combined themselves. They are lobbying every state every state, because they have graduates from a lot of states. So they want these graduates to have the uh, denomination of a doctor, and they want uh, these graduates to have the same protection as medical doctors have. 
And uh, even though I do believe that that is great, and if they want to do that, they should do that, but homeopathy should not be included in that. So I will be, I have been in Harrisburg, I have uh, testified towards it, I will do so again, and I will, I find that homeopathy is an individual study body that takes about three to four years to complete even even the sort of basic certification, never mind any additional ones. So I do believe that um, if you want to uh, license, go ahead, but homeopathy should be exempt in that. Um, Licensing, in my opinion, only creates a, uh, a, an elite uh, uh, status that um, really in reality nobody should have. Um, we are all the same. And uh, we, are only, we are only as good as our knowledge base and uh, our education and what we make of it. And that is my opinion. Gisela, okay? give, give people your website address. Yes, it's my life dash my will dot net okay my life dash my will dot net all right so i will have that on there this afternoon i'm sorry i have i didn't have it right now because i got a little caught up with eastern so let's talk about something that is a little bit more uplifting. I get off my little soapbox here and um, talk about something different today. You know, um, homeopathy, as we know, just to reiterate, for those of you who have been with me from the beginning, well, you know of what homeopathy is. But for those of you who have just tuned in, just to give you a little update of um, what homeopathy is. And homeopathy is really a, a, um, a method of treating pets and people. Uh, and it's based on the premise that any substance that can produce a certain set of symptoms in a healthy person or animal will cure those same symptoms in a sick person or an animal. And that's what homeopathy is. And we use that. They use, they make a mother tincture and they take one drop and dilute this drop with 99 other drops. Then they take one drop of that solution and dilute it again and dilute it again and dilute it again. They do this thousands of times often. That is why many people say, well, it's quackery. They can not, not be anything of, of the remit or the mother tincture in there anymore. Well, we know now that water carries the memory of whatever it came co in contact with. And that is how homeopathy works. They make then take uh, that and spray it onto little sugar pearls or little sugar pills and let it dry. And that is how you consume it. Then either the little sugar pills or you dilute it best is to dilute it with water again, succuss it, shake it, and then take a teaspoon of that. So just remember, like treats like. So if you have a headache, you would take a remedy um, that um, has in its symptom picture headache. You take that and then your headache will go away, depending what type of headache you have. You know, if you have a pounding one in the front, in the back. So there's a lot of, lot of different, and that's why it's good to go to a professional homeopathist at least the first few times that you're starting to work with it, okay? So that's homeopathy. But then there are a lot of, lot of other um, uh, uh, modalities that you can also use. For instance, you can use also kinesiology. Now, kinesiology is something 
different. It's a muscle testing method. And you can uh, also, you also have to study that. However, it uh, can test your body or your animal uh, what allergies. It can determine what allergies they are, maybe the animal may have, okay? Um, it can help and find which are the best foods or supplements for you or your pet. You can even determine the right amount of, of food or product to offer. And you can do that all by muscle testing. Um, holistic uh, vets use muscle testing in their practices, and a growing number of pet owners are learning about this wonderful tool to a better health. And you can go, if you put into Google muscle or kinesiology for pets, you come up with a, quite a number of sites that also teach it. It's, a, it's usually not a long class. And it's usually not terribly expensive. But I do feel that the more we know, the more we know how to help ourselves and our pets, the better it is for us. Um, usually you have, with muscle testing, you have um, two people. I do a little variation of that. Uh, not quite uh, muscle testing, but I, I do something similar to that. I usually take a remedy and I hold it next to the pet, especially when a pet is very, very ill. And I hold it next to the pet and I watch the eyes, the pupils, of if they dilate or if they contract. Um, I also watch if the pet is leaning towards the remedy if it is leaning towards the remedy it does it will be the right remedy um you can also if you can if you can feel it uh, you need a lot of sensitivity and a little training for that the pulse if the pulse quickens then the remedy is the right remedy if the the pulse stays the same and you usually have it on the paw, you can feel the pulse. You can also feel the pulse right below uh, the ear, right by the jaw, you can often feel the pulse of a pet. Very similar to us. Um, but um, if, you, if you do that, um, you can usually determine, if you're, if you're not sure which remedy to give, determine. Also, if you dilute it in water, and you put it on uh, and you succust it and you put it on a teaspoon and you um, offer it to the pet on the teaspoon. If the pet um, wants the remedy and finds, they usually sniff it first. Uh, but if, if the pet wants the remedy, it will go towards it. It will take the remedy. I have a cat right now that has an eye infection. It's not really an eye infection. It's just a tearing of the eye. It's continuously tearing. And I've tried several remedies. And um, giving cats remedies is not that easy, as you know. But um, she has not really responded to much of anything, except one remedy, which was aceticum. And it seemed like it cleared up a little bit, uh, but then it came back. And I put it on her on the food, on a little bit of wet food I used, and I just put the um, little sugar pebbles on there. And um, the last time I did it, after the first time that it worked a little bit, second time I did it like a week or two later, and when the um, tearing came back, cat wouldn't even touch the food, and this cat eats. So um, I went back to the books, looked up another remedy, uh, and found a remedy that was even better than arsenicum, um, which um, again, I put on the food, cat walked again away. And there's one remedy, it's called um, Allium setter, which is made from uh, onions, really. 
And uh, I thought, you know, I had thought about it. I said, oh, maybe. But there was a little bit of pus in, not pus, but blood. Seemed like it was a little bloody. And it was a little bit more like conjunctivitis than anything else. But even the conjunctivitis um, self that I put into the eye, which was difficulty, may I say, um, that didn't work too well. So I had just really put it aside, right? I didn't said, well, it's not going to work too well. It's This is not, not it. But then it, nothing else the cat would take. And opening the mouth of this cat and giving the remedy is almost an impossibility. And I have not been doing that with any of my animals. I usually let them choose of which one. You know, I offer it. If they don't take it, then I try to find a different remedy. Except if the animal is very, very sick, then you naturally put, put it right in the mouth. But anyway. Make a long story short, guess what? Allium said was the right one. Put it on the food. Cat ate it right away. In the evening, I didn't see any tears. I haven't seen any tears for like about a week now. Let's hope it holds. Now, if it doesn't hold, then what I will do is I will give the same remedy, but just a higher potency. So there you can see. Um, uh, our animals often choose uh, their own uh, remedies, and that's how we how we really uh, have seen many of the remedies through animals. You know, there was not so much testing on people, but we know that uh, sheep or so on go and eat arnica. It's a little flower in the in the in the Alps um, and in mountainous regions. Okay. Now, ki that has a little bit something to do with kinesiology. Kinesiology works in the same genre. The, the pet or the person, will you will, through the reaction of them, you will be able to uh, find the right medicines. Do we have any questions, Amnon? Uh, no, and no? I, I was, I was, I was suspecting that it's going to be a slow show. Oh even, yeah! Even this morning, everybody my is show. hunting Easter eggs. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I almost canceled our show this morning because you wanted to hunt Easter eggs. No, because I. <laughs> <laughs> just see you hopping around with little ears on and hopping around hiding Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh, Isn't boy. this great that we can laugh about almost anything? <laughs> no, everybody must be busy with family and activities. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I mean, kinesiology is really, I have found it, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take a real course in in kinesiologists. I have a broad uh, knowledge of it, but I think I'm going to go into depth with it a little bit. And um, because, um, you know, that is a, it's a type of thing that goes well with homeopathy, you know. Um, also, one of the other um, uh, things is um, flower essences, you know, flower essences are exactly the same as homeopathy essences, only made from flowers. And um, Dr. Edward Bach has um, was the one that started the 38 Bach flower remedies, which is in rescue, you know, and... Bach flower, uh, well, in, in rescue is five uh, different flower remedies. But they are also they are healing through vibrational level and help to bring the body back into balance. And again, if, we, if you guys don't write in, and I'm not pleased, uh, make a note, write to your congressman saying, we want freedom of choice. 
And what I might do is, do you think it would be helpful if I write out like a sentence or two what people should should just send to their congressmen? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So I will definitely do that because I don't want us to um, sit there one day and say, oh, we can't buy Arnica anymore. We can't buy Rescue anymore over the counter. Now you have to go either to a vet or you have to go to a doctor to have it prescribed. Would be awful. Would be just awful. Because not only that it would really uh, curb our freedom, but you know what? These people are not trained in homeopathy. And it will they raise... all would have to go back to school. And it will raise the prices too. Oh, out of control it would go, yep. okay? Why do you think they haven't made pot legal? Because they can't patent it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I, not that I, 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 but I'm a girl of the 60s, you know? We always thought that it was rather beneficial in some cases. And they know now that it has so many medical properties that we haven't even, even come uh, to it. Has anybody watched um, uh, Cancer, the Emperor of All uh, Maladies, of All Illnesses on PBS? It was last uh, this week on uh, Monday mm. through Wednesday. No. I'm sure it will be shown again. Ken Burns did a fabulous job about explaining uh, about cancer and cancer research and and... If anybody sits on the fence with this and says, oh, well, you know, let other people do this and, yeah, all right, I like my freedom, but, you know, do you know that only 37% or maybe even less voted on the next election? Inconceivable mm. to me. Yeah. Inconceivable. And, I and, mean... And the truth is... If somebody is sitting on the fence and deciding let other people do it, that's because they don't suffer from anything. Anybody what... who has any kind of an illness, they they always look for some. Well, can I do something in a natural way? That's Absolutely. when they start thinking about homeopathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so right. Yes, and I really find that that. We got to get more engaged again in our, in the political process, in the in the law process that is going through Congress. The big lobbyists, the big companies, are overrunning us. They're telling us what to do, what to think, what to eat, how to live. Why is why do people let that happen? We're having another election coming up. I hope people get a little better engaged um, in the political process. Uh, you know, people died for this, for this privilege of voting. You and I, Amnon, come from a different country. We would never even think of not voting. Right. Am I right or am uh, I right? You're absolutely correct. And we were, we're always involved in what's going on. Absolutely. Okay, so I don't understand why people who are born in this country are not more engaged. And I think what we're go I'm going to do is, and if you um, permit me, I will, I will say something towards it every time that I'm on the air. I really do think that people have to be raised out of their, um, oh, well, I can't, my vote doesn't count. Yep. Well, you know what? Your vote the neighbor's vote, and two other votes are already three votes. That's not only any more one vote. It's a cop-out. You know? It's a cop-out. Yeah. And, and to tell you yeah. the truth, I'd rather a lot of people don't vote. Those that don't know what's going on, I'd rather they don't vote instead of just going in there and hitting this and hitting that and, oh, she looks good, let's vote for her or... He's got a nice suit. Let's vote for him because they don't yeah. know who they're voting yeah. for. Yeah. So, but, you know, the problem is when you don't vote, 
your vote counts to the guy you don't want in office. Because indirectly you do. By not voting, you're voting. You're voting exactly for the person that you don't want in there. Because everybody has an opinion. I mean, I haven't been to any coffee shop or to any, any uh, party or anywhere where I've found people without any opinion. They all have an opinion. Yeah, they do. And, and people need to get engaged and, and, yeah. and listen to what their opinion is and, and weigh it and analyze and say, really, is that what he, he's saying this now? But did he? People don't get involved in there. And if they just, if all, all four years they're just going and playing in the street, doing nothing, and suddenly comes election day and they go into the polls and they're going to vote. Yeah, I don't know who no. to vote for. I mean, they they do whatever. I don't yeah. want to get into this. I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. I really do think, but you are so right. People are not, and I think it has something to do with uh, with being lethargic and also being confused. Yeah, I think people are just so confused of, um, and that's listen, folks. That's exactly the message. That's what they want. You know what? I hate to say this, and I was contemplating before, but by golly, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> before, I'm old enough to know, I mean, I wasn't born during when Hitler, well, yeah, I was born during the war, uh, but uh, the last war, not the first war. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> the and the uh when Hitler came to power, he had a method. His Nazi, his brown shirts, had the entire thing was built on confuse the people, keep them in the dark of what's really happening, hop and talk about the same thing over and over, like, I'm going to bring you jobs, I'm going to do it, the economy is great, we are, we are the best people in the world, we are the, we are the Übermenschen, we are the biggest ones, Germany über alles. That was his message. Well, what do you think is happening now? Same thing. We have the same garbage going on again. Yep. Yeah. Keep us all in the dark and not talk it. Folks, and, you gotta wake up. And they are preparing a big pot of Kool Aid to have us yeah. drink. Yeah, yeah, because we are only consumers to them. Yeah, we are only consumers. So anyway, let's. Yeah, we're not. We are not going to annoy everybody and alienate everybody. And I am uh, tell you guys, I am neither uh, neither Democrat nor Republican. I am. I'm really nothing. I'm, I'm just a person that is out there. I just want us to have freedom of choice. I want us to have a freedom to buy whatever we want. Let's, re if we have to regulate something, then let's regulate the product that is out there. Let's give it scrutiny. If it's on the shelf, It is up for testing. That and everybody, buyer beware. You have to educate yourself towards all of it. So if you have animals, if you have, have children, even for yourself, find out the best methods they are. And if you have a problem, please do contact me. I'm always available. And I'm not quite always as militant as I was today. But um, I do really think that people have to learn and people have to get more engaged. And um, sometimes we had last night, we had a discussion uh, about that naturally. You know, it, it seems like you can't go to a party without having a political discussion somewhere. Um And we, we also had a discussion, and somebody said last night, well, I wish they would regulate uh, pot everywhere, because that way everybody would be stoned from morning till night. That would be the most, 
wonderful thing for the government. They can do whatever they want. And with that, I'm almost going to leave you and say, uh, hopefully that will not happen. Hopefully that will not happen. Hopefully uh, we, uh, we will all uh, get up and say enough. And um, they have, for instance, in Germany, I don't know if you guys uh, know that, um, but in Germany they have right now, they have marches for peace marches, Easter peace marches. And thousands of people are going to the streets and march for peace. Now, not only in, uh, because Germany is in peace, you know, we don't have any war there, but they are uh, concerned with the Ukraine, they are concerned with the Iran-Israel um, crisis, they're concerned with the Palestinians, with ISIS, and all of that is, um, is their concern. And th these people are very engaged, and there's thousands and thousands that march uh, to government offices and they march along the streets very peacefully, but nevertheless saying we want to be heard, there has to be peace. Because if we do not get engaged, folks, I can tell you World War Three is on the horizon. God okay, forbid. so, pardon me? God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. I mean, that would be a devastation that nobody nobody wants to wants to face right so all right can i can i give you uh something that anybody wants to ask does anybody want to have a puppy or a dog or a cat <laughs> or a child or a person that needs to some help a wabbit no you're happy no I'm no, happy. no i said uh, a wabbit Oh, a rabbit, a well, rabbit. Not, not oh, rabbit. Yeah, well, you know, we probably have a lot of overworked rabbits right now out there. <laughs> <laughs> hiding all these little eggs. <laughs> well, if you do have one, here's a remedy you can give to the rabbit. <laughs> you can give him <laughs> aconite. Aconite is for overworked. If you're really overworked and you're really tired, aconite is a good one. Just take one dose and you can hide a few more eggs. <laughs> All, right. All right, my guys. It was a pleasure Thanks. being here. I hope um, I am really interested in what um, my listeners are saying to, uh, to my rant and rave here today. Uh, please, I mean, let me know. My life, dash, my will, at live, L I V E, live dot com. My life dash my will at live dot com. Hope to hear from you guys. Have a happy, happy Easter. We are clouding up for the next rainfall here, and I'm signing off, Amnan. All right. Have, have, All have right. a great Bye bye, great guys. Sunday. Bye bye. Bye-bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brook, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCBBI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net. 